What's going on, folks? Some of you are working today. And I hope you're having a good day at work. But that's why I want to talk to you folks. Because the last time we checked in, if I'm not mistaken, I spoke to you guys about the weasel face dogs. Now, I gave you a description of the types of behaviors and the, the callous natures of the narcissists in the workplace, right? Because it's, like it's like a cube within a cube within a cube, that type of paradox, right? Or paradigm, or whatever you want to look at it. It's like that, where the narcissist obviously is a narcissist, right? And we all know what clinical narcissism is, and we know how it it plays out in any environment. It could be your families, it could be at work, but we're talking about the workplace, right? The weasel face dogs in your workplace. They're weasel face dogs because like I said before, just to give you a brief description of the, the previous video, the weasel face dogs are weasels, right? They're conniving, they serve the interests of the master planner and they only do things solely for that purpose, to win brownie points or some little, you know, insignificant reward from this master planner who would discard them later. But that's another video. We'll get to that too. In this case, the weasel face dogs are weasel and because they're dogs, they're low down and dirty and they would be willing to do anything. In some cases, that weasel faceness is not necessarily about their interchangeable interactions with the master planner boss, but it's more about what they're doing to you behind closed doors. They may be sabotaging things at work. You know, they'll put you know, as in extreme cases, they'll do things that are almost, you know, you just can't fathom these things. But like they'll put boogers on your, on your fucking, if you work a job and y'all have lockers or something, a locker room or something, they'll put boogers on your locker door handle or something. They'll do things, I mean, of extreme nature and you'll say, well, wow, are these people really children? So the weasel face dogs are the people, the down and dirty grunts in this actual war or in the workplace you know this actual battle that's going on now most of the people in the workplace are the sheeple they're the middle ground people right they're the flying monkey types who can be used in just any way that someone who has a, a, a more diabolical a more diabolical man can get them to do something right because that person has a plan or some intentions for a target now that target is always a greater uh force on that job maybe it's the person who just has a good soul maybe this person does their work keeps their nose to the grind or something and these are always the targets of the master planners because they know this person has that inner integrity that could ultimately be you know take their job or that person could rise in society or rise in some way that could overcome them and they're afraid of this person right so they're smart enough to see and they're the sociopaths like why that's why i put this in the hybrid empath versus sociopath series because the master planner boss is the sociopath they are the master supreme narcissist planning these tactics and these attacks from the from the uh from the the war room you're on the battleground the grunts are the fools who are on the battleground right the middle people all of the people in the middle right and you guys are the ones who are used right to do whatever that's going to be i'm just going to tell you to do it you're going to do it that type of thing okay but specifically, today I want to get into another aspect of the of the weasel face dog dynamic in your workplace. And the reason why, look guys, the reason why this series is important, because hybrid empaths versus sociopaths is the actual battle of the fight that's going on of, of good versus evil inside of you. What you're willing to put up with, what you're willing to stand for and stop or not let the other person do. That's what those video series are about. But within that emotional uh, uh uh, counterbalance, if you will, that, that emotional push and pull is what I'm trying to say. I'm getting my thoughts out. Within that emotional tug of war thing that's going on within every soul trying to do the right thing or perpetuating the stuff that you're dealing with, you know, there's that, there's that decision making that you have to make. So, you have to work a job if you, unless you're born with the silver spoon. And that's why it's important because that is the reality, which is all connected. The reality that you're going to make a living some type of way, right? Either you're going to start your own business and employ yourself or you're going to be employed, you know, for a company or something. And on that comp in, in that company structure, you're going to have a hierarchy and there's always going to be narcissists because they're going to be the bosses, 
right? And so, you know, they don't do any work, so they they have they have many 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 hours at work to just sit around and think about how to play games because they don't do anything. They have figured out how to rise to the top in this world to get that that paycheck where they can you know pay their bills, but they can still play games with you, and you have to work in the same conditions as them. So we'll get into the mindsets of the person I want to talk about today, the weasel face dog. But this particular character, Ristic of the weasel face dog, is called, um, what, what did I call it? What did I call it? The power brokers. Yeah. Because I had to jot this down in my head because it was so extreme, the level of how these things happen to people. And people have to go to work and, and you know, you can lose your job. Imagine losing your job and how serious that is. Some of you people out there work a job, nine to five. And if you lost your job right now, maybe you're one paycheck away from, uh, you know, poverty. I mean, uh, from, from, from being out, you know, on the street, pretty much. You know, you're in functional poverty to some degree. You're working. And it, we're not going to judge you about why that's, that is. If you, if you have no education or whatever that is that's making, that's creating it. You're still working. You're, wor- you're doing something in society, Right. And even you people, let me say something. This is another tidbit I'll throw into this video. Just a side note. There's a lot of people in this world who are literally cogs in the wheel in society. And they believe themselves greater than they are. And I just I just don't understand the mindset of some of these people, right? You'll see people at your workplaces. And, and you know, and this is all part of this too. Because this is why they're doing it. I'm going to get to these people, these power brokers, and why they're power brokers. Or why they perceive themselves as such. That's what I'll say. And that's good. You know, the power brokers are the people at your job. Because I'll get right to this and then we'll, we'll go into the discussion. But the power brokers are the people at your jobs who have some type of authority. Not necessarily your boss, but, you know, they may be in HR. They may be uh, someone you have to consult with for some type of benefit or something. And they'll use the leverage of that particular thing to, to, to exert their power. Because they have an ego. Which is not really anything. That's what I'm saying. They're just cogs in the wheel. Now, there may be those people who may see you and both of you guys work for the same entity. Both of you guys, the entity, the the job or corporation you're working for, they're the ones cutting the check, right? They're those master supreme narcissists. You're just cogs. You can be replaced. You're just a a tax write-off. I keep telling you folks, but you have this superficial ego. Right, so you'll play these games with people. You'll you'll see them at work or something. So let's, let's give you let me give you an example of a typical office environment. I worked in the office for many years, and thank God I'm out of there. But let me let me explain something to you in these environments. And I shut. I used to sit down and just you know bite my tongue for many years and just couldn't take it. But I would look at these narcissistic games play out where maybe this cog in the wheel type coworker I had or something. You know, one of my coworkers they may ask a secretary to. You know, go clean the bathrooms when the housekeeper is standing right next to them or something, right? I speak about this in my book, but situations like that. But, you know, or they'll say something to you like they'll, you know, they'll see you at the, you know, at the water cooler. You may be a secretary or some, some, some lesser person in the office and they'll say, you know, they're working hard today, but they are the entity. They are the corporation cutting all of you guys a check. So in reality, in bigger reality, you're just working a job just like they are. You may be making a little extra more money than they are, I mean, I'm sorry, you may be making more money than them. But the point, the simple point about that is, is that you can be replaced. You're nothing. You're not on the board. You're not making decisions if the company wants to go international or whatever they want to do. You just work there. You don't even know about those things, right? They'll just, t- you just have your day-to-day tasks just like the worker next to you, just like the housekeeper next to you, just like the secretary next to you, right? You're just, you're just filing more paperwork or something. So that doesn't make you anyone. And I always knew in these environments that I wasn't anyone, right? I just was working there. I was making a living and that's what the net, the goal was. And that's why I tell you people on the jobs, work your jobs and make a paycheck. Don't get into gossip. Don't let yourself be caught up in the game and play the role as sheeple, right? You don't want to be those people, right? You don't want to be the flying monkeys that are used because ultimately at the end of the day, you will be discarded as well by the master planners. Now getting back to the power broker. These are those people who will use games. I think I spoke about it in the hybrid impasse video because these these series are connected. But in the hybrid impasse video, I spoke to you about the person, you know, your boss or authority figure who may try to use benefits to like to control you or, or to show you that you know you're just something. Uh, 
to be controlled, a person that's just working there. So they'll say things like, you know, maybe they'll play around with your life insurance benefits or something. They'll they'll taunt you about that. They'll say, you didn't do this or that, so we're going to cut your benefits for your kids or something. And, you know, and they're, they'll be as matter of fact about it. Now, if you already have that situated, it doesn't really matter. You People have their own independent insurance policies and stuff like that. And if you're situated, you're you're lucky. And most of us who are situated, we're lucky. But for those people who have to literally get the benefits of a job, because if you're working a job, you want those benefits. And yes, it is a blessing. I, I, I'm going to say this. The jobs are, that are providing you health benefits, that's a good thing. I'm, and I, I'll say that's one good thing about the job if they're doing that. So kudos to the job for that. Even though the narcissists are the actual humans on that job implementing those policies that the company put forth. So it's not really the company in this case. It's the people who run the company. Or who have these little cog in the wheel positions on lower mid management or something that's playing with your life, like I said. So this boss may tell you that, you know, your your your, your baby, your brand new newborn baby or something who just was born into the world is not worth your job if you gotta be out because the baby's sick or something. Well your job comes first. They'll literally look you in your face and tell you this. It's almost like I said earlier in the beginning of the video, you almost cannot believe your ears, right? You cannot fathom that these people be willing to say that, but it's part of the game. It's not going to be recorded anywhere. So when they say it to you, you're going to just have to deal with that. And that is what's going to stress you to a point where you're not going to perform properly on the job. You may, you know, you may want to be, think about your options. You may look at your savings. All of these things come into question that you never thought you had to do. You thought you were going to retire or something. But because these people did this stuff to you, you know, you, uh, you, you just that you weren't prepared for it. And I'll tell you, you guys about being prepared. But also, they'll play games with your paycheck. You know, maybe they'll be the, your payroll office or something. Maybe they may cut your check wrong. They may short your check by, you know, two days or something. Now, for a rich person or something, it doesn't really matter. A two-day paycheck is their paycheck. They, they have businesses or something. It's okay. But for a person of such... Um, who's working every day. Maybe if they don't have a paycheck coming in properly, the proper pay that they, they calculated to pay that bill or you know, get medicine for, for their little son or daughter or something. These are life-defining moments where you question things. So a lot of the violence where people come and get back retribution that are not functionally stable may, may do some action that they don't, because they don't know what else to do. That's how these things happen. So everything that happens bad in the workplace it's interchangeable with bad behavior. The weasel faced dog power brokers are those types of people, right, who have that fine tooth comb to can pick through your files and, you know, and play around with things that, that the job may provide, the corporation may provide or something. And, and you know, if it's a, a health benefit, maybe you're not going to get paid that day or, you know, they'll see you a know, funeral or something. They'll tell you, oh, you know, we can't pay you for that funeral. I mean, just think about how crazy that is. If this person is your, your direct family member or something. So if the benefit was there to pay out for a funeral, wouldn't it be for such a person? Maybe not my friend from second grade or third grade or something. But, but yeah, of course, most certainly my, my close family members. And if you're not honoring that, that is narcissistic. And that's what I'm saying. These environments are purely that and you have to escape under by any means. So in a narcissistic workplace environment, you have to understand the weasel faced dogs are literally on a negative end, the movers and shakers that get this shit implemented by the master planner. The master planner will, 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 will scheme up this grand vision and they will literally uh, meet those that demand. They'll, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll meet the challenge and they'll, they'll face it and they'll accomplish something in cases where the people are weak and cannot fight back. Then the hybrid empaths are the ones in these environments who will sit back quietly and not say much, but know that they have to take action or get the hell out of that environment and take action in some other type of way, which is what I'm doing. So I want you guys to join me, not because for the sake of just joining me. Joining me in your mind means joining something bigger in yourselves. Being willing to act right. Not I, I keep telling you people, this is not about sainthood, right? This is not about all of these 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 doctrinations about you know how you're supposed to behave and all that. Yeah, you're supposed to be you're supposed to be right. You're supposed to act right, but you're not supposed to be willing to harm another person. You're not supposed to be willing to kill another person, right? I'm always getting dry, folks. I don't have any water. A little dehydrated this morning. Um, 
I'm just getting over a cold, but bear with me on that. But I feel good about talking to you about this video, and that's why you know I may you may see my vigor for this. This is really a, a thing that affects many Americans. Millions of you guys are in that 99%, right? Including myself, because I'm not Bill Gates and I'm not coming to you in some bigger ego or something. Yeah, sure, sure, I'm I'm okay in life, but I'm working every day. I'm I'm hustling for myself, you know. I keep telling you guys, business owners have to deal with narcissists too. Narcissists are literally in power positions. So when you're moving and shaking, you have to know who you're dealing with at all times. Whether you own your business or whether you're working in these narcissistic workplace environments. Okay? So I want you guys to uh, think about that. Marinate on that, that aspect of a weasel-faced dog. You know? These are the people that you go home and you, you tell your wives or your family members or, or even you just sit and reflect on your drive home from work. You say, these are fucking weasels, man. That was a fucking weasel. That guy told the boss I wasn't, I was slacking off or something when he was the one slacking off. You see, that's why they're weasels because they're doing, they're, they're putting every, they're projecting on you. Anything that they're doing that is negative and low grounded, they're going to put it on you and make it like it's something you're doing. Okay. So you folks take heed to the people who are around you. If you like to comment in the video below, I'll, I'll, I really would appreciate that. And um, I love bad behavior, folks. I do. But understanding who these power brokers are and understanding your rights on the job will, will better enable you to stay on that job just a little bit longer, right? Fight that payroll office and get your right paycheck for the week. Because they shorted you for some vacation time or whatever stupid stuff that they're doing. Like I said, this is stuff that's, that goes under the radar, but it's the, it's the part of the game. And I talk a lot about this extensively in my book. Check out I Love Bad Behavior, folks, um, on Amazon. And, you know, like the videos and share them, folks. Until then, it's a rainy day. Like I said, I'm going to the store and get me some more uh vitamin C stuff and you know I'm trying to get myself together I'm just coming out of a, a bad bad cold and so if I you know don't look my best hey you know forgive me you know many of us do the same thing you guys out there you're human too so I'm not going to talk too much longer I, I had just enough energy you know I wanted to really I was thinking about that I had took some notes earlier this morning and I was thinking about I've taken some notes sorry earlier this morning and I was saying, you know, oh man, this be great. I mean, I don't feel the best hell, but I really feel like talking about this. So I'm talking about it. So this is the Weasel Face Dogs part two, right? Uh, the power brokers, right? Who are the power brokers? Um, know these people at your workplaces, know how they're trying to play a game on you and you can already calculate your own hours and already have the manuals or whatever uh, protocols or, or, or uh, things that the job put in place, you'll have an understanding of those things. So when these people play those games, you can make them look silly on the spot and they can correct your paycheck or uh, pay you for that funeral time or whatever they're doing. And that's why it's important because you have to work jobs. Not going to talk too long, much longer. I'm going to get down this road and you know cut this heat on in the car and try to get myself together. You folks have a nice day. Um, for those of you out there who are sick, hope you feel better. I'm trying to feel better myself. See you. Take care.